Well, welcome to everyone. I'm so excited that you're all here today uh, and grateful that you're all here today because the work of family constellations is so important. The work of ancestral healing, it helps us shift our lives. It helps us live better with ourselves, with our family members, but with every single aspect in our lives. And it's something that it's been missing. Our previous uh, ancestors knew about this, remembered the past, honored the past, but we have forgotten. We think that we are completely independent from our ancestors, from the past, that we're separate, and we're not. We are connected. We're connected with everyone, but especially with our family. We're connected with our family system. We uh, connect to many generations of the past, not just the, the previous one we're going to be connecting and carrying things up to seven generations of the past. And what happens is that when we are conceived until the first years of our lives, and, and this is all unconscious, we don't know that we're doing this, we want to belong. Because for us, belonging is survival. If we don't uh, belong in the system, we're not going to survive. If we get thrown away, we're not going to survive. So we need to belong. So for us, belonging means that we're going to be able to live. So we connect to our ancestors and we say, I want to be one of you. I want to belong. I want to be like you. So we connect to what's going on, to the beliefs, to the ways, to the system, to the, to what the burdens as well. So it's a little bit like, you know, I'm going to put on my blue shirt today because my family has the blue shirt. And then in my family, that means that Maybe we're not going to have abundance. Maybe we're not going to have success. Maybe we're not going to have love. But I don't care about this. I care about survival. That comes first. So I say, OK, I put my blue shirt, whatever that means. And I'm going to do it the same way as my ancestors, because I'm one of them, because I belong. Because I'm one of this planet. I'm one of you. It doesn't matter what that means for us. I'm going to make these promises, these decisions, these connections to be able to survive. And we also do this for a second reason. We are so grateful. Go ahead. Yeah. We are so grateful for our life. This is a gift. This is a miracle that we want to give back. We want to say thank you to our ancestors. We want to say thank you for this amazing, beautiful gift. So we want to give back, and we say, I'm going to give back by helping you. What you haven't been, to do whatever you haven't been able to do to process what's blocked. So maybe they blocked the fear because it was too intense. Maybe they blocked the grief because it was just too painful and they couldn't accept it. Maybe they blocked the, the guilt of things that they did. And they say, you say unconsciously, an ancestor, I was carrying your guilt for you since you weren't able to accept this, to process this, to release this. To accept the consequences, I will do it for you. I will carry all of this out of love because I'm grateful for my life. So I want to do it for you. So what happens is that. Let's say that my grandmother, maybe she had a, a baby that, that died, and she was depressed because that pain was just so, so intense. And, uh, well, she knows that she's depressed because of that, because it was very hard for her to be able to deal with something so painful. So maybe I don't even know my grandmother, but the moment I'm born, I connect with that pain that she blocked because it was so intense. And I say, uh, I'm going to carry this for you or like you. So then suddenly I'm depressed. But for me, it doesn't make sense. I have family that loves me. I have a job. I have enough in my life. And I just don't want to get out of bed. So I'm carrying that grief. And that is having results of how that is manifested in my life. But no matter how much therapy I do, no matter what kind of healing modalities I do, I may you know, feel like a small step. But I'm going to be always like stuck with this because I want to unconsciously do it like my grandmother or do it for her. So it's until we're able to go to that part where we make those decisions and say, grandmother, I honor and respect you. I see now how difficult this was for you. So, so difficult that even I carry this. But this is not mine, not my responsibility. And it doesn't help me and it doesn't help you that I'm carrying this. So I'm going to release it. And I'm going to release it, not for the burden to go back to my ancestors, but I'm going to release it so that in this process of releasing with love, it gets transformed into something else, into energy of life and love. And it returns to wherever it needs to be as a blessing and a gift, not as a burden. And this is 
the healing that we're doing with Hanif Constellation. This is the healing that we're doing with the ancestral healing. So many of the areas of our lives where we are blocked, where we feel that we do different kinds of modalities of healing, of therapy, that we try to be successful, maybe in our work, maybe with relationships, maybe in different aspects, and we feel that we're always like coming back to the same block and falling over, tripping over the same block again. So those are uh, situations that we carry for our ancestors, that we are unconscious about, that we don't know that we're doing. I always like to say that we are like this iceberg, and the part that's on top, the part that we're able to see is the conscious part, the part that we want to be successful, we want to have love, we want to have success, we want to have joy in our lives. But then, even the big chunk of ice that is underneath the water, we have all these, all these decisions to suffer like our ancestors, that's what's guiding our lives. That's where we're going to go. No matter how much work we do in the conscious part, if we don't go under the water and find those places that, are, that we're not aware of, to be able to let go, to heal, to be able to acknowledge, to be able to connect to the past with love, with acceptance, letting go of judgment and criticism, because this is part of the healing. We are not better than our ancestors. We are not doing it in a better way. Everybody did it the best way they could, no matter what they did. No matter if they did horrible things, they were doing the best that they could. If you think about when our ancestors were born, the entanglements that they also had with the family system of what happened in the past before them. What was going on with their parents? What was going on with the culture? Maybe there was a war. And there's so many things that we don't know. When we hear the stories of our ancestors, we just hear like an empty, empty heart. Like, you know, how much do we remember from school, from you know, our school? And there's so many trauma that we experience in school. What about our parents? Oh, what about our older parents? What was their life growing up? What was their trauma, their suffering? How were they treated by their parents? And in this moment in time, we have so much awareness. We have so much information. And even just in the book of maps, you know, I can search depression in Google and I'm gonna find millions, if not billions, of articles, videos, recommendations, therapies, modalities. Think about our ancestors, our parents, our grandparents. They have been healing. Even therapy. When I was growing up, I went to a therapist and I didn't tell my parents because they were going to think that I was crazy. So I kept it a secret. I wasn't able to tell them. That was me. So when I think with my parents, they didn't have that. My grandparents, great grandparents, they had nothing. They did what they could. And they, what they could, most of them just block these painful emotions and move on. Do what you can. Just, you know, continue. And they did often what they would see others do, what they would have seen their parents do, their grandparents. So very often it wasn't that the best, but it's what they could do. So everybody has done the best that they, they could. Everybody is doing the best that they can, including ourselves. So part of the work that we're doing here is connecting to our ancestors, but connecting with awareness, with acknowledgement, with honor, respect, Letting go of judgment and criticism and deciding that we understand that we did the best that we could. And that all the things that we're carrying for them is not our responsibility and we're going to let it go. And now we're going to have the possibility of letting go because we are already consciously connecting with them. Part of the reason why we're connecting unconsciously is because our system wants to be connected to the past, to the ancestors, to this flow of life where we got our, our, our life from. So when we're able to do this consciously, we're not going to do it unconsciously anymore. We're going to have entanglements to all those places of the past where something is missing. And we're going to have entanglements also to the ones that are excluded. Because everybody belongs in the family system from the moment of conception. This means that miscarriages and abortions are also part of the family system. They need to be acknowledged. They need to be remembered. And here, we're not saying that it's good to do one thing, that it's bad to do another thing. Here, we're not. It's on. <laughs> no problem. So here, we're not on the part of judging, deciding what's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad. Here, we're not saying what things should have been in the past. What we're doing here is the acceptance, the acknowledgement and giving everybody their place. Everybody needs their place. 
So we're giving the place to everyone from the moment of conception and uh, no matter what happened, no matter what happened in their lives. When there's people forgotten, when there's people excluded in the family system, the new members are going to have entanglement, they're going to have connection. And we're going to have the patterns of these members of the family system. So maybe they were excluded. So then we choose unconsciously to be excluded as well in our lives, just like they were. Maybe I have an uncle that, for whatever reason, they, you know, he had an issue in his life, he stole the money of the family, brought a lot of suffering, so nobody wants to talk about this person. And they exclude him from the family system, and I don't know anything. In some place, it's funny, I just read a, a story recently that has happened several times of people coming to me saying, you know, I just saw a picture, and I saw another person in the picture, and I was like, who's this person? Oh, it's, it's your uncle. And it's like, what do you mean it's my uncle? I've been alive for 40 years, and you're just finding out about this person? And so those are the ones that we're going to follow more unconsciously, the ones that are missing, the ones that are excluded. This doesn't mean that if there's someone that's very difficult, that we're going to try to have a good relationship with that person. We are not here working on the day-to-day -day relationship. Maybe it's even our parents. Maybe our parents are people that are, are, have struggled a lot, and we're not able to have a good relationship with them. So we don't need to force this. Here, we're not pretending to try to have a, you know, invite everybody for Thanksgiving if we don't get along. And then have a horrible time. You know, if our relationship doesn't work, well, it doesn't work. That's just the way it is. Part of the work that we're doing here is the work of acceptance. These are the way they are. For whatever reason, the work that we're doing here, it's more of the day to day relationship, it's in our heart. We accept everybody in our heart, we honor, we respect. And if part of me taking care of myself is to have some distance, even from my parents, then I'm going to do that. I'm going to have some distance. Maybe I'm not going to get together so often. Maybe I'm not going to call them so often because the relationship is not a healthy relationship. Yeah. And that's also part of the healing, to realize that we're not small children anymore. We don't, when we are small children, we need the family in order to survive because we're not able to be independent. We're not able to live on our own. But once we become adults, we are able to do this. So we don't have to feel that we have to do what our ancestors want us to do. Sometimes I have clients that are 60 years old and come to me and they're still doing what their parents want them to do. They're still trapped on that way of doing things because that's what they've done all their life because their parents are very, uh, you know, maybe very dominating in the sense that they want to tell the children what to do. And I always say, they're not bad people. They think that they know best, they love you. And this is the way that they're showing their love. But now you need to realize that you don't have to do what they're telling you to do. You're not a small child anymore. You can make your own decisions, even if they disagree. But instead of saying, I don't want to hear anything about you, then you go deep into your heart and you say, thank you. I know you're telling me what to do because I know that you think that, that you know best. That you think that what you're recommending is going to be what's best for me. So it's coming out of love. I see that. But I know what's best for me because I am myself. I know what I want. I know what, you know, I, I need to go on my own path. So thank you. But I'm going to make my own decisions, even if you disagree. And sometimes this is hard because having the disagreement of our parents can have consequences. But if we truly want to be independent, then we should be able to accept these consequences. If that's what we want. And everybody has their own path, everybody has their own way. But, um, but it's hard. Sometimes the parents are not alive anymore and people are still doing what their parents wanted them to do. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard, and sometimes a lot of people suffer because of this. So part of the work here is to honor yourself and say thank you. I'm not a small child anymore. I know I'm going to do what I know and what I think that's best for me. And maybe it's a mistake that I'm going to learn from my own path. I need to do this. So this is another part of the healing. Making the, the, the choice to be in our energy of the adult, of our energy of uh, being able to be responsible for our lives, and we're going to be responsible for the mistakes as well. We accept everyone in the family system and we accept ourselves. And we understand that we're human beings, and human beings make mistakes. That's part of how we grow and learn as well. And we learn in different ways, but one of the ways that we learn is through mistakes. So mistakes can help us in so many ways, but we need to feel okay that we made a mistake. If we hurt 
somebody else and say that we're sorry and make amends if it's possible and then move on instead of getting stuck instead of holding on to the guilt of why did i do that and why right? did i make a mistake you made a mistake because you're human and everybody does mistakes so we're going to learn we're going to make amends if it's possible and then we're going to move on so that you know i'm still able to move on towards the direction that i want toward life toward joy toward beauty towards love towards whatever i want to do so all of this is the healing that we do with the family constellations we do this healing um, by acknowledging by accepting by honoring by respecting by letting go of the judgment and criticism that we have of our ancestors of, or of anything in life anyone from the family system and we say uh i'm gonna let go of the person that not mine not my responsibility not helpful that they're not helpful to me and that they're not helpful to the world and i'm gonna let them live my life and what i choose is this is joy is health is abundance is success and i'm gonna do it because i know that i deserve it i'm gonna do it for all of you that were not able to have this so that this is not so that you that your suffering is not in vain I'm going to do this for everyone that's alive right now so that this opens the doors for them to have access to this. Sometimes I may be the first one that is actually going to start to have a, a different kind of life in the family. So the moment, you know, maybe my ancestors have had very hard and, and difficult lives and they have suffered and maybe because of where they came from, where they're living, they're not able to love themselves. And then I say, ancestors just like you, I'm not gonna love myself. If you felt that you didn't deserve and you were not worthy, then I wonder you, I'm gonna feel that I'm not deserve, deserving and that I'm not worthy. So when I do this work, I say, ancestors, you deserve, you were worthy, and you deserve to, to have self-love. And so do I. And now I'm gonna do this for you, I'm gonna do this for myself. But I'm going to do this to bring an opening to the system so that everybody else also has the possibility. And you've heard like these stories in the systems. You know, sometimes we we come from families where, uh, you know, in the past, some some cultures women would not uh, would not study, and the first one that decided to study had the hardest time because they were breaking the pattern. They were doing something new. But once they are able to do that, the second one, the third one have an opening it's easier for them so sometimes this is what we're doing we're breaking a pattern to bring a shift in the family system to bring more, more energy more energy of life of joy of, of, of health of abundance of to be able to live in the present moment sometimes we're stuck in the past sometimes we're stuck thinking and worrying about the future and that's not helpful because the only thing that exists is in the present moment so it, we connect to the present moment and we choose to be grateful for the things the way they are right now in this instance in this moment we choose to be grateful for everything we have and through this connecting to everything and accepting and being grateful we get energy for the things that are hard when we do this kind of work uh it's a little bit like we're born with this backpack full of rocks and when we in different moments in our life and in different kind of healings and healings from family constellations it's like we're taking out these rocks from the backpack However, there are some big rocks that we're not being, for whatever reason, they're going to stay there a little bit longer. We're not able to take up. But when we connect with acceptance, with gratefulness for what there is in this present moment in our lives, when we do this kind of healing and the other aspects that we do have access to heal, it's like we become stronger. So then whatever rocks are there in the backpack are not as heavy anymore. Because we are already stronger to deal with those situations. And we are able to then enjoy what we do have in the, in the moment in life. Maybe we have an illness, and that illness in the past has been really blocking and really limiting in our lives. And we do this, this work, and, and the illness is still, still there, but something shifts for us to be able to have fun, even though we have the illness, even though we have some problems. Sometimes when people do this work, what they do is that they do this work because of a relationship that they have in their life that they want to bring healing to. And after a while, I say, you know, how are you? How's it going? And they say, you know, it's interesting. The other person has not changed at all, 
But what drove me nuts about them and was making this relationship so difficult, it's still there and it doesn't bother me anymore. It's like I don't care. I can even, I can, I can sleep with it. So sometimes things do not change at all, but something has changed inside of you and you have peace and you're okay. And even though things are still there, you're able to enjoy, to have fun, to be connected to the present moment and be okay, even if the situations have not changed. And this is why um, it brings such a big movement and healing and change in our life, uh, this work that we're doing. And um, for many generations, we would be connected to the past. We would learn from the stories of the past. We would learn from their, our ancestors and their experiences. And that has been lost. And this has made the, the gap between us and our ancestors bigger, like wider, and has made our need to connect with them in an unconscious way even bigger, because we're not connecting with them in an unconscious way. We're not remembering them. We're not honoring them. We don't know their stories. We don't know what happened in their lives. And this is so important for us that we're gonna do it one way or another. So we're either doing this consciously or we're gonna do it unconsciously. And often unconsciously, it's going to be remembering that the things that their, our ancestors walked, the difficulties, the traumas. When we do it consciously, we're able to let go what we unconsciously decided to carry. And we also receive the blessing, the gift, the joy. The, there's so much wisdom in our family system. There's wisdom on the things that work and did not work for them. We are the flow of life that has moved from generation to generation. Our ancestors, deep down inside, they don't want us to suffer like they did. They want uh, the next generations to do better. They want the next generations to, to have what they were not able to have. So then what happens is that when we are able to start doing this work, we connect to all that's there from our ancestors. We, can, we connect to the energy of life. And this helps in our lives, it helps with the healing. So, um, the different parts and, and different foundations in the family constellations method are the belonging, the knowing that everybody belongs in the family system, our place in the family, and the, the place, the role that we have, and also a balance between giving and receiving. So those are the, the importance, uh, the different orders of love, both in the family constellations, that uh, we need to have in mind in order to have uh, the, the, the healing and the order and the strength in the system. And the one that I wanted to talk about, because I talked about the one as well, I wanted to talk about, about the, the roles, the positions. Everybody has a place, everybody has a position in the family system. And sometimes we are in the, in the wrong place. Sometimes, you know, maybe, um, let's say that my mom was married with my father, so I'm making up a story, and my, my father dies when, uh, when my, me and my siblings are very young, and then my older sibling takes the place of my father because he's not there, because the family needs help. But that's not his place. He's in a place that doesn't belong to him. But you know, he needs to help. He's taking the place of the responsibility of the family. And we've seen this happen a lot. When somebody takes the place of the, the being responsible for the sibling, helping out the, the mother, helping out the father, because the other one is not available for whatever reason. And that takes the strength of that person. It doesn't mean that we don't need help, but what's important is to always remember our position, our place. And that's gonna help us have the strength and the connection and the openings in the family system for what each one is doing in their moment in life. So it will shift in a hurt energetically to a different position. So let's say the example of my brother being in the position of my father, so he is in the position of uh, being partnered with my mom, and this is just energetically. There's, this doesn't mean that they're, they're partners, but just energetically, he's in that position. So then when he wants to, to find a, a partner in life, energetically, he's connected already. So there's no space for that. Maybe he has to, wants to have children, but energetically, his siblings are the children. So then he might have trouble finding children. So being in our position, it's gonna help us uh, be in the strength of what we want in our life, not being in our position, it can have very hard consequences. Sometimes, uh, maybe my grandmother was not available for my mom when she was a young, uh, a young girl. And then when I'm born, I, I feel this need of my mom that she, she was so her mother that she didn't have. So then I say, mom, I'll do that for you. I'll be your 
the love that you were looking for in your life. So then I kind of like stepped into the position of my grandmother. And I started being a mother to my mom. And I'm always taking care of her. I'm, I feel responsible for her. I'm always trying to, to, to fix things for her. I'm always telling her what to do. This is not my position. And this again is going to have consequences. So it's important for us to be in a position and with our parents uh, to respect their decisions, to respect their wishes. If our parents have a situation where they're not able to make their own decisions, maybe they have uh, Alzheimer's, maybe they have dementia. So then there we can do the, make decisions for them. But if they're still able to make their decisions, we need to honor and respect their decisions and let them do whatever they want with their lives. If they want to sell everything they, they have and go to a small, small island, then, you know, well, that they have fun. <laughs> no matter how much we disagree, it's, it's their lives. And sometimes we want to tell them what to do and then we're stepping out of our position. So being in a position is very important. Sometimes we're not going to be in a position with our partner. Sometimes I may be in a position of a mother to my partner. And then that's not going to be healthy. That's not going to have a, a healthy relationship. Maybe uh, my partner is in a, in a position of a uh, sibling to me. And then that's not going to help either. Then we're going to have more like a really friendship situation, but not, uh, not a healthy loving relationship. So the position, we need to be aware of the positions that we have in our life to and the responsibilities of those positions and be in our place. And that's going to give us strength. Sometimes we're not in a position because there's a sibling that passed away. So maybe there's, there's a, a, I have a, a sibling that passed away before me, maybe as an abortion, maybe as a miscarriage, maybe as a one year old. And the pain is so big with my parents that they kind of like block that. And the moment I'm born, I step into that position. I feel the pain of my parents and I say, oh, you this child that you lost so that you don't have to suffer so much. But I'm in the position of a child that was not able to live, so I'm not going to be able to be fully in life. And a very good example of this is, um, I don't know if you know the, the painter, uh, Vincent Van Gogh. So I don't know if you know about his, his story, but he had a sibling that, that passed away. Um, I think he was a, a young child, maybe young around the age of one. And uh, he passed away before he was born. So then he was born. And his parents gave him the same name. So the sibling, his name was Vincent van Gogh, exactly the same name. So the parents lost the child and almost like wanted the next one to make up for that one that they lost. And I don't know how many of you know about the life of Vincent van Gogh, but he had a really hard life. Always feeling out of place, never being able to find his place in life with friends, with everything. Uh, he made amazing paintings and he wasn't able to sell one single painting in his life. Yeah. It was only after his death that his brother started being able to, to, to sell his painting. And now he's one of the most famous painters in the world. But why was his life so difficult? He was in the place of someone that was not alive. He didn't know his place. He felt out of place his whole life. He felt that there's not in life. So, so these are the things that happen. So there's things that we're not, when we feel that we're not in our place, it could be that we can be in the position of somebody else. Uh, sometimes, for example, um, we have emotions that are from our ancestors. So we can know that we have emotions from our ancestor when the emotions that we have are overwhelming, are too big for what we're experiencing, are too hard. It would last too long. So um, maybe it's grief. You know, we experience something difficult in our lives, but we are not able to process it. It's like it's a completely, we try and try and try, we don't know what's going on. Maybe it's fear. Maybe we feel afraid all the time. Maybe we want to just go and hide in our rooms because we don't want to go out because we have fear. There's fear that something's going to happen. So if we have a, an emotion, maybe it's anger. You know, somebody does something like very little and we explode with anger. So often those situations is because we're carrying an emotion that is not ours. So just being aware, when you're in situations that feel out of place, that feel overwhelming, stop, take a step back, take a deep breath. And then you say, I wonder, who in my family system suffered with this? What did I hear in their emotions? And I honor and respect them for that that they are. And I send them my love. And I choose to let go. Of the part of this that I'm carrying that is not mine. 
but it's not my responsibility to carry. And you see that whatever you're releasing is going down to the earth and coming into the beautiful energy of the love and life and returning as a person of the earth. And you don't need to know the stories of the past. You don't need to know who does this belong to. Because that information is in your system. If you have those entanglements, your system knows. So just the stopping, the acknowledging, the connecting, the honoring, the respecting, the choosing, the letting go is part of the healing. And we can do this anytime. If you have something that's very big, very complicated, or if you have a family system and there's a lot of suffering and trauma, mm -hmm. then maybe to do a family constellation is better because we can go deeper into all the different aspects and the healing that is needed for those situations in our lives. But just the acknowledgement that we're connected to our family system, that our family system is important, that, that we're here thanks to them, and the turning toward our family and thinking about them. I mean, how many of you have thought about your great grandparents in the last year? How many don't? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Good job! <laughs> But you know, two of, of all these people that are here in the room, three, yay, <laughs> one more. So it wasn't like this in the past. We remember them, we honor them, we respect them. So we need to start doing that more. And I'm, <coughs> like, I'm, I'm from Guatemala, and in, in Spain, in Latin America, there's this uh, celebration, the Day of the Dead or the Day of All Saints, where we stop and we think about the ones that are not here anymore. And I like this. Because, you know, life is busy. We have work, we have children, we have parents, we have situations, we have, you know, the house, the food. I mean, it's, we're busy. So sometimes we don't have time to stop and think. So I like this because it's a time to stop and actually think and remember everyone in the family system. And even if we don't know them, even if we don't know anything about them, just acknowledging that they're important, they're, that they're part of the system, that they belong, that's already a healing moment. We can do it maybe when we're all together for we can celebrate Christmas. We can have a different kind of celebration. Maybe for your birthday. We can do it at different moments in, in time. Maybe tomorrow you want to buy some flowers and then put them in your house. And each time that you see those flowers, you think about your ancestors. And you do that once a month. You do that twice a year, whatever you want to. Maybe you want to do your own thing. Maybe you want to go to the family of your ancestors and try to connect to the information that's there from the past from your ancestors. And all those movements are already healing movements. We start healing already from them. I don't know if you've seen, um, there's a Netflix series called Another Self. It's, uh, it's in Turkish, it has eight uh, episodes, but it's dubbed in English, and, and the dubbing is really good. Sometimes the dubbing is not so good, this time it's good. And I really recommend it because it's about family constellations. It's about three, three friends and their lives and their drama. And they do family constellations when they start connecting to, to the past, to the ancestry, to the stories, and they start seeing the shifts and the changes in their lives. It's really a, a, good, a, a good series on, on family constellations. So, another self. Another self, yeah. It's, it's really, really good. And that kind of connects because they go to the hand, they go to the places, they go, uh, and, and it's a way of connecting and remembering. So then I invite you to start thinking about your ancestors, to start thinking about the past. If you are not from here, if your ancestors are from a different country, think about the country, about the culture. And part of the work here is also to honor and respect the culture, the, where it came from, without judging and criticism. There's no culture that's perfect. <laughs> There's no country that's perfect. And what usually happens when we're thinking about the countries is that we think about the politics of the countries. And then we start rejecting, it's like everything. We, you know, we reject everything on the country because we don't like the, the politics and the politicians of, of the country. But the country is so much more than that. The country is the people, the country is the land, the country is the past of the country, the country is the energy, the country is the food. There's it's so much more. So don't feel rejection just because you're rejecting one part, especially if it's a country from your past, if it's a country from your ancestors, because that's important too. So all these little things you can start to do. You know, maybe you want to do a dinner, you know, maybe your family comes from Greece, and then you want to do one special night uh, a month to have a dinner from Greece. I mean, you can start doing these little things, and all these little things is a step for the healing, a step for connecting, a step for honoring and respecting, it's a step for remembering, it's a step for the deep healing. 
So I invite you to start thinking of how you can do it and do it your own way. Maybe you want to send, you know, make a letter for your ancestors. Maybe you want to plant a tree in your in your garden. Whatever you want to do, do it your own way, but find a way to remember. Find a way to connect. Because when you do this, there's you're gonna to start to live it unconsciously and find the things that are blocking you in your life, the things that you're not sure to find from your ancestors. So um did anybody tell me the time? <laughs> Three questions. Three questions. Okay, so questions. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. So it's almost like yeah, I'm having this back in my question. So, for example, we talked about ancestors of our of this lifetime. Could there be a connection between yeah. our past life ancestors? Is that what you're saying? <coughs> so I think that everything is connected. Mm-hmm. And um, there. I think that we belong to different groups of, of souls that we connect to and we're learning something together and we come to experience different different things in life. Uh, the work that we do in family constellations is more specific to the ancestors that we have from this body, in this lifetime. Can there be other things? Maybe. Yeah. I think that probably, yeah, there's just there's so much that we don't know. I always think that the things that we don't know, maybe in the future, is going to be proven scientifically, but just right now, we don't know about it. So it feels really mystical, it feels really like woo, like you know, people say this is very woo to me. I always think that woo things are just things that we're not able to explain yet because we don't have the technology to explain it, we don't have the knowledge, and we're not there yet. But I always think that probably in the future, we will, we will be able to find explanations for all that, but right now, we don't. We don't have explanations. So, yeah. Is the work done individually, or is it group classes, or can you say more? So what I do is that I do group sessions and I do individual sessions. So the group sessions are online or are in person, and what happens is that we like open up a door that we're not sure what's going to come up. Sometimes you know there's very difficult things that come. Maybe there is crimes from the past. Maybe there is uh, you know abortions that we don't want to share with others in, in a group setting. So then uh, I have actually started doing only group sessions and people would say, uh, please do something private because I don't feel comfortable sharing this with a lot of people that are strangers. And then I started doing the, the private sessions and I realized that they were as powerful as the group sessions. So, so I do both. It depends on what you feel that you want to do. If you prefer private, then private. If you were comfortable in a group setting, then a group setting work, works as well. I, the group settings I do them in San Jose or online and then the, the private ones are via Zoom. Yes. The last time I talked to my grandma was two days ago. I went there and I was in a workshop with her. So that makes sense. But I, my question is um, is this is it, is this only for deceased um, relatives or is it for living relatives as well? So it's for living relatives as well. Okay. The entanglements that we have in the family constellation in, in, in the family constellation in the system. Uh, the entanglements or energetic bonds or what we take from the family comes uh, mostly from our parents, but it can go to seven generations back. It can also be from uh, our parents and their siblings. So if they, you know, maybe my aunt and uncle, I would consider them ancestors, but I can also take things from them. And they can be alive and they can be dead. So parents, grandparents and their siblings, grand- great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents up to seven generations back. Even we can have entanglements with people that are not from the family system. So for example, maybe my grandfather committed a crime and I can be connected to the victim. Maybe uh, a doctor saved my mom's life and that doctor by saving her life is also part of the system and I can be connected to the doctor because he hasn't been acknowledged and and thanked. Um, So so we talk about this, so mostly would be our ancestors, but we also connect to others. Someone that is also very important is ex-partners. So if my father had a wife before he married my mom, that ex-partner is very important as well and is part of the system. Half siblings are part of the system too. And then half siblings, if you think, uh, and there's all these different dynamics and possibilities and considerations. What if I'm born from um, my mother decided to get pregnant with a sperm bank? What about my half siblings? They're still there. All the other babies born from the same father, from the sperm bank, are my half siblings. 
So there is so so this is there's there's a lot. Um, and of course, we don't have to find out how many people have siblings. Most of us wouldn't, if we were from a spare bedroom, we don't know. But just the acknowledgement that we have, that we probably have a lot of, you know, have siblings, and just, you know, bringing this to our heart. Um, before we leave, I just want to give you my, my information, because if you can help me to take some of these, and you can, uh, it would be wonderful, because last year, since you have them around, please ask them. Uh, I went to another fair and I decided I was going to make more than enough pal. and now I have around 4,500 <laughs> <laughs> so if you could take that, I would love it because I don't know if I have to throw some of them at some point so um, there's uh, in my website you'll find all the information about the events that I have online and in person you're going to find the link for the private sessions you're gonna find also uh, videos and links to my YouTube channels. I have a YouTube channel in English and I have a YouTube channel in Spanish. If you go to the YouTube channel, there's a lot of videos. Most of them are around five minutes long. If you're interested in different topics, just start listening to the videos because just the acknowledgement of the information starts also with giving moments. <laughs> so everything is there on my website. You can find the information. And from there, there's also the link to my Instagram if you want to uh, have you know the information that I share there as well. You can also share it there. So everything is there. Thank you. Yes? Oh, I just wanted to share that I've done many, many dozens of translations of ways that I've done my own private and as well as group, and they're extremely powerful. Um, taking the training, the workshops, and it's amazing. It's so subtle, but it's so powerful. So I highly recommend it. Yeah, thank you, Yana. <laughs> um, I, uh, thank you for the reminder. I do a uh, yearly training on family constellations. So if anybody wants to learn how to do this modality, I do the next yearly training is going to start around August. So, and I'll put all, all the information on, on my website. Right now, I have the information of the previous training that's going on, but soon I'll, I'll update it to the next one. Yeah. I don't do one on one in person, only via Zoom. <coughs> yeah, but, but it's basically the same. So thank you everybody for being here today. I hope you enjoyed.